we've kind of been dancing around this idea. Uh, I'll just go out and ask it. Is a crispr plant a GMO? My definition of GMO is actually looking at what is the word actually, if you if you say what does it stand for, it stands for genetically modified organism. So is, in my mind, every plant that we actually grow for food is genetically modified by humans. Because you go back to domesticated plants, um, if you look at wild maize, for example, as opposed to domesticated maize, it looks nothing like what domesticated maize is now. It has a few grains to it. It's called teosinte. You don't actually see grains that actually look like corn kernels. Um, over time, in the selection process, people have changed how those plants appear. Um, they have traits. Maybe you know, people picked the tomatoes out there that were larger, that were sweeter. Um, they had these different characteristics. But then, over time, we started using plant breeding. And so where you cross two different plants together that might have different traits you're interested in, and the goal is, is that you combine them in, in one final plant. So, you know, that's, that in my mind is also human um, genetic modification of plants. So if that is, then transgenic technology is, and so is, so is CRISPR. Usually, so GMOs, that's a very broad definition of GMOs. Most people will probably be thinking of transgenic, though, right, when they hear that term? When they hear, the public? when they normally hear it, they're thinking transgenic. And therefore, you know, CRISPR, when you're using it to create a deletion, um, for example, you're removing DNA, you're removing genes, you could do those same things um, by a random mutagenesis, or you could do it by crossing. What's that mean? So many people may not know that... A, uh, the way you get a lot of the diversity for plant breeding is that breeders actually will treat plants with a, with a chemical called a mutagen that causes um, changes in the DNA, and then they look for different traits. So that's how, for instance, you've gotten 8 million different colors of coneflowers out there if you're, if you're a gardener. Um, so it's just random, though. We don't really, just you're not random. targeting a specific So gene. the good thing about CRISPR is that you can actually specifically say, I want to change this single gene. So you could create those same mutations randomly, but if I know what gene is required to actually make that orange, bright orange um, coneflower, I could do it with CRISPR. So it's just another way of changing things, but we could do both without using transgenes, without using foreign DNA. So by that definition, it wouldn't be a GMO. Mm -hmm.